right, Coach. See, the, it's been an interesting camp this year just because of the fact that you all are working at uh, working out at night rather than during the day. How the guys adjusted to that the time period? Not not so much the heat of the weather, or the weather, just working out at night. Well, I think you know, the guys love the weather. I mean, when it, when it gets to be 85 and it's less, and you got a breeze coming off the bay down there. I mean, we're you know we're in paradise right now. Now I think probably make, it makes for long days, and, and we're cramming a lot. You know, I think sometimes they probably think that we're you know cramming 10 pounds of flour in a five-pound bag. You know, with lifting to the mornings and treatment and walkthroughs, and you know we're making sure that they eat plenty. And so, you know, I think they probably just about ready for practice, just so they know that the day's getting to be. Uh, Closed out, but uh, yeah, it's been great. Guys that are returning, who stood out so far as your, your leaders? We all think our two inside linebackers, Brendan Young and uh, Rodney Dansby. You know, both of them all conference players, and they're just I think that that's kind of the, the heartbeat of our uh, uh, defense. So it's been you know really tremendous to see those guys, and and safety Isaiah Cash just continues to uh, really uh, grow and. and He's a great athlete, but he's just becoming so uh, dynamic. And, and, and there's a lot of plays on the, on the practice field that uh, in the evening you kind of say, now I'll remember that play. It's, you know, it's, it's kind of good to be remembered as a player. I think uh, on offense, you know, we really, really like what we see in uh, Brennan Harrell, local Houston. Uh, high school product a wide receiver he's a big 6'6 receiver that really has just shown a lot of big play capabilities and then uh, Carl Reynolds you know who's a west side high school uh, junior, junior college product and both those outside receivers have had great great ball camps so far defensively they say that's what wins championships and that gets you over the hump those guys uh, I know they yeah they're mouthy yeah. <laughs> More than you. <laughs> yeah, I, I tell you what, you know, we, we got a lot of confidence on defense, and we got uh, nine starters back, and you know, a lot of guys have played a lot of snaps on defense, and so I think uh, uh, a good off season. I think we're you know we're bigger, stronger, we're a little more, a little more powerful you know, for the kids, and so I think when you uh, see those kind of qualities physically grow and with the confidence, you know, guys begin to have higher expectations and. When you have higher expectations, you know, you, you don't mind kind of telling someone that you think that uh, you're there that day to make your life rough. You know, the, the other thing, putting the schedule together, FCS is kind of hard because you don't just, you know, they may take a chance, they may not take a chance on the FBS level. How hard was it to put the, the schedule, non conference schedule? Well, it's been kind of because all across the country, you know, we're seeing, you know, conferences, membership just change and, you know, be the FBA and FCS. And, we, and we've had the drama in the South Conference, you know, with some teams. But uh, I think it's things have settled down now. I actually look forward to it. Here we've been at Northern Colorado at the Big Sky Conference. And uh, Tennessee coming out of the Ohio Valley, who won the conference uh, there, the Ohio conference and playoff team and so I think two out of really FC schools is good. You go beat those folks and you have an opportunity to really leap forward in the in, in the national discussion. I, I'm reminded back in twenty nineteen when we played uh, South Carolina who uh, South Dakota at that time and we went up there and beat them and spent the next three weeks, you know, the rankings. And so I think um, you know those things uh, Texas State I think Anytime you play an FBI in the state of Texas, your Texas kids are going to be excited about that. And so I think week three, when we have that opportunity. And, and then we're glad to have Lamar back at the conference in, in Incarnate Word. And so, you know, with, with Commerce coming in also as a new conference member with the four uh, Louisiana schools, you know, we've kind of settled down now. And, and we've got eight teams. I think there's a lot of parity in the conference this year. So, you know, this is going to be fun week in and week out. The other thing is, well, let me start with now the program on a, on a, in its short history. It's got three guys in the league now. Uh, I can't remember the last time Southland had a quarterback drafted that didn't start in the Southland and move otherwise. 
guys have gotten drafted, but they transferred back because of circumstances. Right. Just, just talk about what that meant, not just to the, to the school, but actually to the conference itself. Well, you know, I think last year when um, – I want to try it, uh, man. Caleb Johnson, you know, was picked by the Bears. He went in and made that squad and led the led the Chicago Bears in special teams tackles. I mean, that's quite an accomplishment for for, for a rookie. And um, uh, I think he has an opportunity to have a long career. And so, you know, Caleb is a guy that um, uh, set set the table for everybody else to, to kind of enjoy eating off of. And uh, uh, with Bailey being drafted in the fourth round and. By all accounts, from what we hear, he he is uh, really competitively making you know things interesting at quarterback there at the, at the Patriots here in, in their camp, and so excited for him, and really believe that uh, Bailey will have a long career. You know, Bailey had one of the uh, highest uh, uh, wonderlick tests of all time, and just shows you how smart he is. And it's a good quality to be, to be smart at quarterback and, and to be you know talented. So I think, you know, it's good. And then Jerry Stearns with the Buccaneers. And, you know, getting, I think anybody that gets a chance to catch balls from Tom Brady every day, that's a pretty good opportunity to, to have in football as a part of your resume. So uh, we're excited about those three. And, and then just hopefully continue in, in the next year or two. We can, you know, we keep on adding. So one thing that does is that brings interest to your program. It also makes the local kids look okay. I can actually get a, a shot. All I have to do is just go and put, participate, yeah. compete, and get better on a year-to-year -year basis. Recruiting is the lifeblood of, of any program. How have you all start to become received now in, in the area? Well, I mean, it, it's just it's not a discussion that you want, that you've been um, trying to think of a way of, of of talking about opportunity. Now, the reality that you can come to HBU. And have a chance to have a career in the NFL, you know, it just makes it easy to have that conversation. You know, we, we probably don't get a transfer quarterback like Justin Fomby in our program this year if, if it's not for Bailey Zappi. And, you know, him seeing what Bailey did here, then, you know, beginning to, to feel like, you know, he's able to accomplish much of the same thing. And so I think that happens, you know, when, when you get a couple um, – Young receivers, you know, that are tremendously talented, that are recruited by FBS schools and us, and they see what Jerry Stearns was able to do and to become a national leader, you know, in, in, in receptions. You know, here again, it just gives them the, the confidence that something special could happen here for them. And, and I think that Rodney Dansby, who was you know, freshman All American, he's a finalist for the Jerry Rice Award, and you know, one of the top freshman football players in the entire country last year at the FCS level. You know. Um, Rodney probably doesn't come here if it's not for Caleb Johnson. So, you know, what's happened is we had, we've had good players that we had to really do a great job developing. We're getting guys with a little more DNA. Now with that same development, we think that they can be, you know, really rock stars out there in the future too. Let's see. Is there anything else in this early fall camp that we hadn't talked about that you can think of? Well, I'll tell you what. Last last year we entered camp, probably one, one, one of the most uh, injury-riddled programs and as the season manifested last year just week in week out we were just losing kids uh, too often so I think you know for us right now uh, we're so healthy uh, we had a great summer and, and Trevor Kanye is our strength coach and he did a tremendous job with our kids and so you can kind of see uh, uh, when you have a lot of healthy buys out here you know where it creates competition and uh, you know it brings out the best of kids and so you know, we've had six practices now, and we've had six really good workouts. And so I think, um, you know, if we're able just to continue to stay healthy, I know we've got some talented guys, and it'll be fun to see them compete. And expanding on that, how good, how much is that a positive as far as getting a good strength and conditioning guy to come in and improve where guys thought they were and now they found out, oh, okay, that is a better way. You know, I think that uh, most programs would tell you that the uh, strength coaches spend more time with our athletes than anyone in the program. You know, as coaches, we're on the road recruiting, and, you know, a lot of times we're, you know, in meetings all day watching film and preparing and, and what have you. So it's, uh, and, and, and then the NCAA rules prevent us from having a lot of time with our players in the off season, you know, as coaches. And, but yet there's a lot more time that's afforded to the string coaches. So, you know, uh, the system, you know, if you will, uh, kind of um, 
really increases the amount of time that your players are going to be with those string coaches. So when they do a good job of building toughness, when they do a great job of building camaraderie in that, in, in that locker room, when, 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 when there's an element of uh, accountability that the, the, the weight room can, can do so much better than mo most places where every day those guys, you know, you, you put three guys in a squat rack and, uh, you know, you don't want to be that guy that's not there and, and the other two are asking where their teammate is. And so I think um, they're just all things add up to the, the value in those guys and you can't put really uh, uh, enough, enough uh, uh, I guess, compliment, you know, on the job that they do. All right, Coach Schaefer. I'm sorry. Coach Seeley, basketball friend of mine is, is on my mind and all. He must be doing something wrong. Uh, but uh, reintroduce yourself and we'll close this out. Hey, I'm Vic Sheet. I'm the head football coach at HBU and dogs up. This is Jerry Lee Woodley Jr., the college sports reporter, signing off.